Welcome back. I promise this will be the last and final video on the synthesis, uh, on, on the reaction routes of aldehydes and ketones. There's still aldol condensation, which we would look at as a separate component because I don't want to merge it in here and make it confusing. I just want to leave it for another occasion. But we still have aldol condensation to do after this one. But for now, we're going to wrap this one up. So acetal formation, what is, again, you see, I've kept the reactants the same. We got an aldehyde and a ketone. This is generic, okay? You see there's two of whatever this is, okay? Again, what if this was two, excuse me, what if it was two, I, instead of R, let's say I have CH3OH, and of course, the bottom portion will stay the same because it's CL is acting as a catalyst. And we're reacting this reagent. We replace the generic version by a more realistic version. This is methanol. And that reacts with this compound. Basically, what we're really doing is right most part of it. Again, we're only full interested really in the carbon containing the double bond O. Stop right there. And then we're adding, this is an acetal, okay? Whatever this is, this OR, or actually let me write it this way. This OR is called an acetal, okay? Basically, we're adding two ORs. See, we started with ROH, right? The H is just, you know, it, it exists like this. Think of it this way, okay? ROH exists this way as an alkoxide and a H plus. The H plus, if it's a spectator, then the RO minus is what the, the nucleophile is. Okay, this is a spectator, this is the key component. So basically, the OR gets added twice to the carbon, replacing the double bond O. So double bond O is replaced by two ORs. Now, do it this way. And then go back and replace the R with the actual, whatever the value of R was. I think at least when you get started, this is easier to do it than just try to do it all in. So O and R was CA3, so just write CA3 and then do the same with the other R. Does that make sense? Very easy. So, oops, sorry. Try this one using the above analogy. Okay, try using, I've given the same, uh, but this time it's a ketone, but again, that doesn't matter because we're still focusing only on this. And I replaced the R value from CH3 to SCH3CH2. Go ahead and give this a shot. And if you have any questions, ask me during class. And we're going to the last and final reaction, and that's Vidic. Vidic is a classic in almost any exam, including my class or any exam outside of my class. Vidic reaction is almost a classic. Okay. You know, we looked at Wolf Kishner, right? We went from an aldehyde to an alkane, ketone to an alkane, right? In a Vidic reaction, we go from an alkene, for sorry, from an aldehyde to an alkene a ketone to an alkene. So the key thing to pay attention, again, this is an aldehyde. Again, we're interested in the C double bond O component of the reactant. This is a ketone. When you come to the Wittig reaction, the key here is this triphenyl, okay? PH stands for triphenyl, okay? That's a key, give away that you have a Vedic reaction at hand. All you're going to do is look at what is the negative component. This is the negative component. The triphenyl, oh, it's not going to attach to the ring because it's too big. That becomes sort of a spectator ion. This, whatever next to the negative is the key component. 
So rewrite the entire reactant the same way up to the C, even the double bond, and then write instead of the O, replace the O with CH CH3. In this case is CH CH3. In a different case, it could be something else. For this case, I'm gonna actually do this so that you can see it. So it's what's next to the negative. It's this whole component. So rewrite everything for a ketone, including the double bond. Just the only thing that's gonna get replaced is the O by C, C, H3 twice. And we've got a double bond. So we ended up with an alkene. Whether you start with an aldehyde or a ketone, when you have a Vedic reaction, you will end up with an alkene. If you plan to sit for any professional exam in, in pharmacy school, dental, or medical school, I think, I'm not sure how much of the organic portion in pharmacy or dental will have, but for sure the MCAT portion, Vedic reaction is one of the very, very commonly asked questions. And all you have to do is focus on what's that negative part, take that whole thing, replace the O with that component, and that's the end of it. So again, I've given you a gist of all these reactions. Imagine if I do the mechanism for each one, it'll be at least 30 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, maybe 15, even 10. We've done at least 10 reactions. That's 100 minutes. That's well over an hour and a half. Okay? I'm just saying that 10 minutes. I don't think I can really convince you in the 10 minutes, which means I have to explain at least 30 minutes per reaction which means you're just literally sitting through thinking, where am I gonna see the effect of these mechanisms? Probably nowhere else, unless you go on to get a PhD in organic chemistry, okay? I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but that's really the only place you would see excessive use of mechanisms, okay? But from this class perspective, if you know a few of the key mechanisms for key reactions and the rest, you know how the synthetic route works and what is really happening, then I think you, you're set, okay? As it is, this is a lot of information. You may think it's a lot of information to remember, but try your best. And then again, staying on top of the content as we cover that is, this, is the secret to success. And I think that's all I wanna say. And we're done with reactions of aldehydes and ketones. As I said, we still have aldol condensation. I will dedicate a separate video for it because I want to show the mechanism and explain some of the practical reasons behind it and then dedicate that video for just aldol. So stay tuned for that. But for now, we're done with aldehydes and ketones as a chapter. So we'll be moving on to a new topic soon. Stay tuned.